John. How are you today? I'm really, I'm really well, and it's really great to have you on Marketing Connected Live. We are uh, having a great conversation today about uh, the role of uh, the CEO in the whole practice of marketing. So we're look, really looking forward to that. Uh, I wrote to the community this week about the, the the CMA's purpose is really to embolden the individual marketer to make a, a positive impact on business results. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting into that whole subject with you. Um, you have been this, inside in the CMO role, but also now are in that powerful CEO role. It's really great to have you here. Um, maybe just to start, Kevin, I, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Who are you? How did you get into this position? What was your journey like? Uh, well, you know, obviously, uh, looking at my uh, my gray hair, it's been a long journey. Uh, I started in uh, in sales. Uh, I won't tell you how many decades ago, but I did, yeah. and uh, which was a natural transition into marketing. Um, been in quite a few industries uh, from uh, media broadcasting. Uh, Office products, the exciting world of office products. Yeah, oh sure. Uh, uh, vitamins and uh, health, uh, health supplements, um, and uh, and ended up at uh, at Skip after uh, doing a couple of years uh, working for a global cancer foundation. I think everybody, hopefully everybody, has heard of Movember. Yeah. And, uh, here's where I am today. Most of my career has been uh, has been uh, marketing, uh, leading marketing uh, um, in whatever organization I had I had worked for. So you're a lifelong marketer. That's really great. Um, as you're coming into the role of CEO, was there any trepidation that you had uh, about coming into a different type of role? I guess both are, are generalist types of, in some ways, generalist types of roles. But what was your thought process as you were asked to take on this new position? Um, you know, really, it was just to kind of deal with the, the enormity of the task. I mean, Skip... Um, Skip was uh, built on an amazing platform, amazing uh, entrepreneurial uh, spirit, founders, uh, and so it was. My my role was to begin to harness all of that um, in, in a different way. You know, as yeah. you as you need to scale, it's uh, it's something that uh, you know you can't quite be prepared for. Um, you know, the growth of a of a tech business like this in a category like this, um, you just have to use all of the, you know, experience and mistakes and, uh, and successes of your career and, uh, and, you know, use those, um, to measure, uh, strategy and make decisions. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, I, listen, when I joined the uh, skip, um, you know, uh, the job was entirely, uh, marketing. How do we, uh, you know, how do we elevate the brand? How do we yeah. cement ourselves as the, uh, as the uh, Canadians uh, choice uh, uh, for uh, food delivery? And so yeah. we did a good job of that. That's terrific. Right. No, and yeah, I mean, that's great. And, and I love the Canadian aspect of, of this brand. Uh, obviously it's uh, a lot of employees, um, a lot of the offices in Winnipeg where, where I I'll, I'll have also spent some time. I think it's, it's right in the center of Canada. You have a good, perspective east west um tell me a little a bit about skip what's what's this yeah. brand all about man it, it listen it's my pleasure to talk about skip and and yeah. you know you 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 mentioned winnipeg that's where skip was um was born and raised um you know our founders were primarily from uh, saskatchewan and they moved to winnipeg to to build out the business, wanted to be in a in a in a in a in a, in a larger um, urban setting, and uh, today we have um, about thirty five hundred employees uh, across Canada. That's not that's not our wow. that's not our contractors, not our couriers. That's just yeah. employees who are working uh, for Skip. Every uh, you know every every part of the organization is in Canada. We 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 outsource uh, nothing. Uh, everything is insourced in Canada. All of our infrastructure is here, and for the most part, is it, it is in uh, it is in uh, Winnipeg. And very proud that uh, we're able to maintain Winnipeg as uh, essentially our our headquarters. Uh, it's pretty exciting. But Winnipeg yeah. is our uh, our particular breed, and I just don't believe this business would be where it is if we hadn't. Uh, if we hadn't started there, to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of grit and determination. Yeah, for right? sure. Yeah, for sure. Even to get through the winters, I think you need that you need a certain type of person 
uh, that, that, that can and have that persistence. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the brand and, and your philosophy of it. Is it really just for consumers or does it fit into the different uh, value chain within Skip? Like, tell me about how you perceive brand and its impact uh, uh, through your through your constituents. I mean, brand is everything we are. Um, you know, uh, we are a tech business. Um, we are a brand led uh, tech business. Um, you know, brand enables us. And, uh, and in, in, in the case of uh, uh, Skip and the business that we're in, uh, we're, we are, we're a three sided marketplace. Our, our marketing um, is uh, critical across all three stakeholders. And that's, that's restaurants. That's our, uh, that's our contractors, our couriers, and that's our, um, that's our customers, of course. And so what, you know, how to make um, or how to ensure that the brand is relevant and, um, and you know, the, the brand of choice across uh, all of those stakeholders is critical. And how, how does it uh, relate to, you know, the employees uh, in particular or your drivers or is, is there, do they feel like they're part of it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, I, I have to believe that, um, you know, any business that wants to grow and to, and to scale quickly, um, and I know this to be true, is you have to have buy-in uh, um, across the organization. You have to you, you have to count on each employee in the organization to understand what the mission is, what the strategy is, um, you know, what, where we're going. Right. Um, and how important brand is. I mean, you know, as marketers, um, you know, our job is to bring, is to bring customers to the door. It's up to the rest of the organization to, uh, to align to, to the brand promise and, you know, welcome them in and, 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 you know, and, and nurture that, nurture that relationship. Everyone has a responsibility. And so, you know, and that applies across, um, you know, all three of our, uh, of our, of our stakeholders, um, you know, our, we do a lot of work with restaurants and developing their business and showing them how they can succeed, um, you know, off of delivery. The right. world is different right now. This was never intended to be a, uh, you know, the sole source of revenue for restaurants. We wish it weren't. We certainly right. wish it weren't, right. but it is. And, and so, you know, we need to ensure that they, they are able to maximize, um, you know, bringing their brand to, uh, to their community, to their, to their neighborhoods. Great. That's good. I want to switch gears a little bit and then get right into the marketing uh, uh, relationship. Sure. But, but as a bridge, I'd like to talk a little bit about your creative. I just love it. I mean, every every time I see the, those spots, uh, I just um, it, they're so they're so Canadian, but they're using a U.S. actor. You know, uh, it must have been a creative creative process to come up with those. Uh, you know, John Dom ads. Yeah, listen, John. John is uh, John is without a doubt. Uh, um, you know, American, and but I will tell you this that. Uh, He's one of the biggest hockey fans you'll ever meet. So yeah. it's this, you know, the, just this natural. But how we got there is is a, is a rather unique story. I'll I'll tell you a little bit about that. But I, I one of the things that we are most proud of is the creative, um, you know, the self-deprecating. Don't take yourself too seriously. Right. You know, a bit of fun. Um, you know. Uh, that's a reflection of us, our brand. I, I, it's very, very authentic. Yeah. Um, you don't have to spend very long um, at Skip to understand that, you know, we, we are a head down organization. We don't take ourselves terribly seriously because there is always something, you know, uh, around the corner that we're going to need to overcome a challenge that we're going to need to manage. But it's who we are. You know, we, 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 we approach things in a Bit of an aw shucks way and that's that's i think the, the creative is a perfect reflection of that and i think you know the agency that um that we worked with um who um you know brought us the idea and we recognize as the path 
Yeah, uh, the path forward. Um, they deserve credit, but I think we also deserve credit for ensuring that it represented who we are. Right. But I don't think I don't think it would have it it I don't think it would have resonated otherwise. Um, yeah, I think and so, right. you know, listen, how we got there is is uh, just a quick story. Is we were focused on um, a Canadian to deliver that. Uh, to deliver the message in, in a very similar way, you know, about entitlement, about, you know, have, uh, poking fun at, uh, at oneself. And we were, we were talking at the very, I mean, imagine the biggest uh, Canadian stars there are. And actually we were down to probably the biggest Canadian star very much in the same, you right. know, the same, uh, same kind of person that John is, but you know, it, it just didn't come together at the last minute because of timing. And we were left to trying to figure this out. And, uh, you know, uh, between our agency and ourselves, we, you know, the idea of John came up and we thought, well, what, what could be funnier? What could be more interesting as certainly on the first campaign reflected that about an American who wants to be Canadian for all of the things that we represent, all the good that, that, that Canadians represent and, and certainly our, our love of hockey. And that's, that's where we focused. Um, you know, we, we reach customers uh, in, those, uh, in those dining moments and hockey is that platform for us, for sure. Terrific, no, that's true. Um, just a bit on COVID. Um, so um, is your success, I'm gonna be a little bit asinine here. That's uh, okay, ask is any. Is your success mostly because of the suffering of others? No, that's way too, way too strong. Uh, is your success you know, dependent upon the pandemic or do you see that people are changing their habits in any event and, and you're going to accelerate with that trend in society? Yeah, I, I think if there's one frustration um, from, from our team, it would be that, you know, the perception that, you know, we, we are benefiting um, from the pandemic and the crisis. Um, look, this this category that food delivery it was it was accelerating like this. It would have gotten to where it was, where it is today. It might have taken a year, eighteen months, who knows? Maybe two years longer. But it was headed there yeah. as more people were bringing to. And it's and it's customer driven, right? Yeah. It's it's about meeting the needs. Um, of, of customers, Cu customers are driving this category. Uh, and so, you know, we as a business um, were there um, at the beginning of, of, of the pandemic to be able to scale and accelerate and, and add restaurants, um, you know, who hadn't been on before and, and, and bring many, many new uh, customers to our, to our platform. And so we're very we're very proud of that that we're in a position to be able to do that, um, you know. As a brand, uh, we 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 take this responsibility very seriously. We were the, you know, we immediately built uh, support packages because, as I say, you know, this is a three sided uh, yeah. the three sided marketplace for us. Uh, we can't we you know we don't exist and we can't prosper and and no one can prosper if restaurants are aren't healthy and, and, and able to, to meet the challenge themselves. And so, you know, we, we immediately uh, cut our commission rates. There's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, your brand can only overcome so much. And when, uh, you know, there's, you know, the false narratives around uh, skip uh, perhaps taking advantage, nothing could be further from the truth. You know, that's, that's, that's maybe a, a competitor who needs to deal with that, but it's definitely yeah. not skip. You know, we, we, we assume that responsibility and we, and we take it, we take it on. It's good to hear. I know some of your employees uh, personally, and I know that they are in that role of, um, you know, caring for the, the, the their, their portfolio of restaurant owners and, and trying to make sure that they're successful. And uh, that's terrific. I love that. Um, now we're going to segue into the role of the marketer. Uh, versus the role of the CEO, you play both of them in this organization, and and uh, I'm interested in your your thought process as you moved into this CEO role. Are you are you still the chief marketing officer? Did you have to kind of give that up a little bit? How did that feel? Uh, and uh, and kind of how did your perspective change about the impact of marketing, or did it? Uh, it was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do is just to all of a sudden step back. You know when you're you know, 
when you're a, a marketer, uh, and, and in my case, you know, I'm a little bit obsessive about the details and, you know, I, we kind of built this brand with our hands and there were people that did such an amazing job before I arrived and we built yeah. off that platform. But when you, you know, when you craft something with your hands and then all of a sudden the best way that you can lead is the, is, 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 is by stepping back right. and let others um, take it from from there, it's um, it's a little challenging when you've spent your entire career in it. But uh, I've tried to be as deliberate as I can. I don't always get it right, but um, but yeah, I I my I, I have you know my focus needs to be as as much on every other part of the business, our partnerships and our right and our and our marketing and our operations. And so I'm not I'm not being. Um, the best I can be for the organization if I'm just focusing on the one area that interests me the most. But I will tell you this, that, you know, the inclination might be, well, that's an easy conversation you're going to have with the CEO then because he's a former marketer. Well, yeah, yeah. I don't side. think that's true <laughs> no, because, because, you know, maybe, maybe I've seen a little bit. I know the questions to ask and I know how to challenge. So it's not always the easiest conversation, I would say. But we, we have an unbelievable team. And so yeah. over to them. Yeah. What I love about that transition is that the the studier of brand becomes the owner of brand, and and so you come up you come up through that conversation about brand in a very uh, integrous way, and now you have to live it, you know, and, and your day to day decisions. So you, in, in some ways, the CEO in my mind has always been the chief brand officer. Um, I know that's delegated in a lot of organizations, but I think that's very really important. Uh, that the leader also leads the brain. Agreed. Yeah, you, you know, listen, I've been called that guy in the corner who makes the pretty pictures. Yeah. You know, um, but if that's the place that you choose to exist in, well, then that's how you're always going to be regarded. Yeah. Um, the marketing, chief marketing officer or the chief or, or the, the person who leads brand and marketing an organization better be as strategic as the CFO or, or the, or the COO or right. the other part of the organization, you better understand every single part of the business. Right. And if you, if you choose to only focus on brand and ignore, um, you know, what's most important to the CFO or the COO or the, or the chief people officer, if you, if you choose to stay there, you're always going to be left in that box and the opportunity to lead at, right. you know, at different levels or be an influencer or to, or to, to be able to challenge. Right. Because that's, you know, that's, that's the gift when you can challenge and be, and be listened to and appreciated because you understand all aspects of the business. You better be able to finish the sentence of what matters most to the CFO. You better be able to finish that. Sentence. Yeah, no, I think you're right. And I, I, I think that's a really important point. Sometimes I think it gets down to what we talk about, right? That we brag about. Uh, if we're bragging about things that are only in our own language um, or paradigms, and we don't go over to that other person and say, like, what, 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 like what's the question I need to ask you? How can, how can I help you um, with your KPIs? Uh, let alone just under worrying about, you know, the marketing KPIs. Yeah. You know, it, it comes down to that age old discussion around ROI. Yeah. Um, you know, and marketers have always, you know, resisted, you know, being put in that finance box. Well, at the end of the day, if, if the discussion or the, or the measurement is uh, about your contribution is only about numbers, then you haven't done your job. You need to demonstrate how what I'm doing translates into KPIs. They may not be quarterly KPIs and they may not be H1 KPIs, but you've got to, you, you have to be able to have, to, to, to speak the language of the full business and not just, right. and not just marketing and don't resist the ROI discussion. Embrace it. Yeah. Always embrace it and understand because through those conversations, you're going to find the common ground that people are going to, they're going to align. And, and, you know, the, the chief market officer may own brand, you know, if, if you want to sure. call it that, but that's not true. Every executive owns brand. 
right. because everyone is executing on in a way that is going to affect brand. Yeah, and I think that's really what you just said is extremely important in that um, it's, it, it comes to the level of confidence to be able to 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 not be um, not be worried about overstepping your ground or, or trying to find the safety in the creative process as opposed to making a difference in business. And it, you know, I, I I think I've often thought about whether marketing is an expense driver or a revenue driver. I'm sure you have your opinion on that one. Um, you know, I think it makes, it, it's very important to find a way of correlating to either rev, current revenue or, you know, price earnings ratio or something in the area of growth. Um, because if not, um, you get that, that problem where as soon as the, the revenues or earnings goes down, so goes down the marketing, it was just counterintuitive. Hey, listen, I, I've, I've fought for budgets in the face of yeah. overwhelming evidence that we can't we can't afford it. At the end of the day, if marketing is not seen as a driver of revenue, then perhaps it's the wrong, it's the wrong strategy. It's the wrong marketing. Right. You know, um, perhaps you're investing in your own folly. You know, you're the, the things that you think are most important rather than what the business, um, what the business requires. Marketing is an expense, and in many organizations, it's the single biggest line item. But it's absolutely critical and necessary in order to drive uh, growth, um, to 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 in, you know to invest in and, and prosper in new categories. You marketing is, and, and I'm not just talking about the you know the the pretty pictures of of you know TV creative, right? But if if you're being put in that box that you're just a big expense, I you know you need to change that conversation. And that's up to the marker. That's up to yes. the chief marketing officer. I really do. Whether chief marketing officer or vice president marketing, the titles aren't important. The person who is who is most responsible or overall resp has overall responsibility for marketing in an organization. That's terrific. Terrific. My last question to you today, it's been a wonderful conversation, Thanks. Um, is around your advice. We have our CMA Next program, um, cmanxd.ca, I believe, um, if you want to look it up. But... Um, so we are very interested in making sure that we are attractive to people coming into the industry, that they, they choose marketing over some of those other professions. Um, you know, and I know it's probably been a long time since you've actually been involved with that entry level recruitment or whatever, but do you have any thoughts for that group of people as they're looking to build their careers in this day and age? Any words of wisdom? Well, yeah, I mean, I, listen, I, I'm not interviewing, um, um, you know, marketers, um, you know, just joining our, our organization anymore, but I, you know, I, I need to find somebody, um, or I, I would be looking for uh, someone who is approaches the business fully, fully rounded. I mean, and you, you can't, you know, I was doing that in you know, rancher level positions, but to be able to understand a business from end to end, to be able to articulate, um, you know, in that in that interview with whoever the hiring manager is, what what they see in your brand and how that is enabling or could enable success in an organization. You have to be able to articulate that. It's not something you. I mean, everyone is hired for their potential, but you need to arrive with a point of view. You need to give a point of view, and I I think those are the discussions that. That that really enable um, that really enable great hires. To be honest with you, oh, that's great. Thanks very much, Kevin. I just reached yesterday. I just reached gold status on your on your uh, your apps, and I think I get uh, some more points or something. So I'm excited about that. Yeah. Well, thank uh, you for that. I appreciate and, it. And it, and I'm very excited about having uh, this conversation with you. I, I, I really appreciate you taking time out of a crazy agile day that you have working for Skip and. Um, Thank you for being part of the CMA. Well, I, and I thank you. Um, listen, I wish everyone um, health um, and I uh, hope everyone is safe. Uh, for our restaurant partners, um, we wish for nothing more than for their dining rooms to be open and to be able to begin to, to enjoy, um, enjoy restaurants again like they were intended to be uh, 
yeah. to enjoy. That's that that's our wish at Skip, and that's 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 where I hope we get to very very soon. So um, thank you very much, and I I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to you. Thank you.